Demons! Oh boy, where do we even begin with the horde of demonic forces and evil entities that have plagued the horror cinematic landscape since time immemorial? Now, it's safe to say that there is a hell of a lot to get through, and after the proverbial cork was shot out of the demon bottle way back when in 1973 with William Freakin's The Exorcist, horror cinema has been ripe with more possession movies and demonic investigations than you can cram into a well worn Necronomicon. And thankfully for us, they all make for some particularly terrifying horror content, so let's jump into it, shall we? Hello horror fans, what's going on and once again welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch, as today we choose to take a look at the top 5 scariest demons from horror movies. Roll the clip. La plume de matante. How long are you planning to stay in Reagan? Until she rots and lies stinking in the earth. For the curious amongst you, of course, that scene was the demonically possessed Reagan McNeil under her affliction of the demonic overlord himself, Pazuzu, because of course it is, this is a scary demons in horror movies list, and we have to pay tie to the forefathers of demonic horror cinema, else we'll be running the risk of ticking off more tumultuous entities than our insurance can cover. So yeah, better safe than sorry, right? Of course, William Freakin's The Exorcist is our most honourable of honourable mentions, but you know what we like to keep things fresh over here at Top 5 Scary Videos, so hopefully a few of these horrifying entries will surprise you. I mean that in a good way. Hopefully. Oh, and also there may be a few spoilers in this particular list, so don't say I didn't warn you. Kicking off at number five, Bathsheba Sherman. No! Bathsheba! <laughs> By the power of God! I condemn you back to hell! Oh man, don't you just love that scene? And I think it's quite fitting to be kicking off our list with perhaps one of the most iconic demonic entities in recent times, the otherwise horrifying Bathsheba Sherman, first depicted in James Wan's The Conjuring back in 2013. Now, throughout the events of the film, the entity of Bathsheba plagues Roger and Carolyn Perron, along with their five daughters, Andrea, Nancy, Christine, Cindy and April, after they moved into an old dilapidated farmhouse out in Harrisville, Rhode Island. Not only did Bathsheba turn hand claps into a terrifying horror device, but it was also in the relentless attention to authenticity where this particular demonic entity truly shined, framed by the notorious paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. And that's when we were exactly where James Wan wanted us with this film, because perhaps more so than any other demonic possession film, it kind of felt real because it kind of was. Loosely based on the true story of the haunting in Harrisville, Bathsheba Sherman was the malevolent spirit of an alleged devil worshipping witch back in the mid 1800s. As the legend goes, Bathsheba was a direct relative of Mary Town Eastie, one of the many women executed for alleged witchcraft in the Salem witch trials of 1692. In 1863, Bathsheba married a rich farmer, where under she took the surname Sherman and gave birth to his child. When that child was just a week old though, her husband caught her attempting to sacrifice her baby to the devil. And when she was exposed, Bathsheba climbed to the top of the tree outside the Harrisville home, proclaimed her love for the demonic overlord, cursing all those who would take her land in the future, and hung herself from the branches. There her demonic reign began, and there we have The Conjuring. Yeah. Either way, Bathsheba is pretty damn terrifying. Next up at number four, Deborah Logan. And really, the truth of the matter is, I need only play that particular clip to highlight how utterly grotesque and terrifying the demonic Deborah Logan is. Because, come on, I don't care if you're the most seasoned horror fan of all time, that scene is well and truly messed up. But in actual fact, we have to give credit where credit is due, because when we say Deborah Logan, we actually mean Henry Desjardins, the malevolent entity that is the true antagonist of 2014's The Taking of Deborah Logan, written and directed by Adam Robitau, which, as a side note, is an awesome some horror film, and in particular one of the most well-crafted found footage horrors of the decade. The pain and suffering comes from two separate directions for the poor Deborah Logan, as she has been afflicted by the terrible disease Alzheimer's, whilst also being paranormally puppeted by an evil French physician, Henri Desjardins, who uses Logan as a means to return to our plane. As the film goes on to elaborate prior to the events of this film, Henri Desjardins mysteriously disappeared after a series of cannibalistic ritualised murders of four young girls, after which we discovered that Desjardins was attempting to recreate an ancient demonic ritual that would thus make him immortal. Also, my favourite part of this film comes after that particular revelation where Gavin, the camera operator that serves as the pilot for this found footage documentary, instantly leaves after hearing that particularly terrifying information. As in, we never see him again. Gavin gets one sniff of cannibals and demonic ritualistic sacrifice and he's straight out of dodge like a bat out of hell. I'm not exactly sure why, but in an otherwise genuinely terrifying film, that particular attention to detail made this film 
so worthwhile. Well, other than the fact that Deborah Logan is freaking nightmare fuel. Swing it in at number three, Payman. Hail Payman! It's always bad news when you've got a demonic cult in your treehouse, isn't it? And it's even worse news when that particular demonic cult has just used you as a vessel to usher forth their demonic overlord. Now obviously, spoiler alert for those of you that haven't yet seen Ari Aster's resounding 2018 instant horror classic Hereditary, but if you haven't, stop what you're doing, go and watch it, and then come back so we can discuss the demonic implications of King Payment. Hereditary is a terrifying film, but what makes this particular demonic entity deserve a place on our list is in the even more terrifying implications of his nefarious reign. Perhaps more so than any other demonic horror film, Payman seems to cut above the rest, despite the fact that, well, we never want to see him. And therein lies the rub. You see, whilst Hereditary is very much a film about a demonic entity, it's a film about how one single source of evil can affect the lives of many, many people. Hence, you know, the demonic naked cult in the treehouse. The fact that Payman has an entire chain of command that serves to manifest his evil will on our earthly plane is a concept that has for the most part been entirely overlooked by the genre. I mean you could argue that the omen and its sequels were the original progenitor, but I'm not entirely sure whether the number of the beast is equally as terrifying as Payman searching for a host and making people behead themselves with piano wire in the process. The demon Payman is the embodiment of despair and hopelessness exemplified within the events of 2018's Hereditary, and in some ways it may be the most visceral depiction of demonic possession in horror. Coming in at number two, the Gemini Killer. Gemini is dead. No, I am not. I'm alive. I go on. I breathe. Look at me. Look at me. And I'd just like to preface this point with the fact that William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist 3 is the rightful spiritual successor to William Friedkin's 1973 classic, The Exorcist. And in its own right, it's perhaps one of the most satisfying sequels slash third entries when held up to most horror franchises. I mean, it should be, given the fact that William Peter Blatty was the author of the original novels, and this film is very much him setting the record straight. And this time, rather than the Pazuzu and Reagan McNeil show, this time we get a whole host of demonic possessions and a whole new terrifying paranormal concept. In the events of the film, Lieutenant Kinderman is on the case of a murderer investigating a series of gruesome murders that seem to fit the modus operandi of the renowned serial killer James the Gemini Veneman, played by the awesome Brad Dourif, who strangely enough was executed 17 years prior to the events of this film. Not Brad Dourif, I mean his character. And well, yeah, you guessed it, the Gemini killer was so damn evil in his mortal life that his soul was sentenced to eternal damnation to remain in a state of torment as a demonic entity, and as it turns out, the demonic spirit of the Gemini killer just so happens to take possession of a very familiar figure, Father Damien Karras, one of the two priests to oversee Reagan McNeil's exorcism during the events of the first film. As it turns out though, Pazuzu is still kicking about, and the demonic overlord has taken the Gemini killer's entity under his wing, using his power of possession to enact his revenge on Father Karras, keeping him in a state of eternal pain and inner conflict. Based on Brad Dourif's performance alone, without the fantastic fantastically horrifying narrative of this film, The Gemini Killer is one of the most unnerving demonic entities in cinema, and rightly so. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, The Stranger. And this may be a little bit of a surprise to some of you, but just stick with me. And also note that if you haven't seen the incredible 2016 South Korean horror, The Wailing, written and directed by Na Hong Jing, then please do, because it's awesome. And also a true demonstration on how to pull off an utterly unnerving horror movie purely by characterization alone. The truth of the matter is though, there are so many conflicting forces of evil at play throughout the events of The Wailing, that on first viewing, it's incredibly difficult to decipher exactly which evil to be afraid of. There's Myung, aka No Name, the woman in white who may perhaps be an all-powerful god of the land or a malevolent witch that uses people as playthings. Then there's Il Guang, the drifter shaman that seems to have all the answers, but its most unsettling character alongside many other worthy evil entities, zombies included, is the stranger who just so happens to be the devil himself. Maybe. 
there's a lot going on with this film. However, the most terrifying aspect of The Stranger, hands down, is the fact that although he very much is possessed by the devil, the evil crow spirit, the Tengu of Buddhist mythology, and all of those things combined, what we see throughout the first few acts of this film is the human side of him trying to cling on to whichever morsel of his own mind that is still left behind. The Stranger is very much a tormented victim of this demon, and it's through the extraneous lengths that his human side goes to to try and cling on to life and hope that makes it that much worse for us to see as viewers. We don't know who to trust in this film, that's a given, but as those few closing scenes roll around, it becomes very clear that all hope has been extinguished and evil has won. And it doesn't matter if it's a demonic horror movie or not, that's where the real fear lies. Well there we have it horror fans, our top 5 list for the top 5 scariest demons from horror movies. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you think there's plenty more where that came from? Well why don't you let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below as well as any choice picks of your own. Before we depart from today's video though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Chauncey Sheeran Jr says, Jackie my boy, quick question, what's your number one movie that you won't watch before going to bed? Or I don't know, maybe that could be a top five. Well Chauncey, first of all, I love getting called Jackie boy, keep that up. That would also be an oddly specific top five and also we could probably fill up a few parts with that one. Um, I'm not entirely sure really. Recently I was going to re-watch Hereditary late at night and then I kind of stopped myself and realised that I was sitting in a dark room and it was past midnight so yeah probably not the greatest idea. Well on that oddly specific note, unfortunately that's what we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top 5 scary videos in particular then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual I've been your horror host Jack Finch, you've been watching top 5 scary videos and until next time, you take it easy.